Oh, once again, people, here we are. That's right. Totally local podcast covering everything you need to know and love about the Monmouth and Ocean County area. The Jersey Shore. I consider this the Jersey Shore. Not like the TV show. This is real people. We're talking to real people, real businesses all up and down the shore. We're even talking to people from, you know, maybe not so much near the shore, kind of near the shore, but it affects all of us anyway. How are my guests doing today? We got Joseph Astorita from Bonfiglio and Astorita coming back. He loved it so much. He's back again. How you doing, Joe? I'm doing good. Good, Thanks good. Thanks for having me back. And we have a, a newcomer, uh, Matthew Cohen from Two Rivers Title. He heard so many lovely things that uh, Aaron uh, persuaded him to, to get on the show. How's it going, Matt? It didn't t- I'm doing great. Didn't take didn't much good away. I think Matt... You know, slip me a twenty dollar bill, you know, via via Venmo. Um, <laughs> not, not physical, no no real money, but uh, said, "How do I get on and talk about these great things going on in the world of title insurance?" <laughs> Perfect, that works. <laughs> and always, uh, we have we have obviously Aaron Levine, LG Insurance, uh, the cosmic glue to our uh, daytime daily happenings as far as in and around the uh, Jersey Shore area. How are you doing, Aaron? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. I'm happy to be here with uh, with you again, as always, and with these two guys. Um, it's good to circle back into the, to the real estate realm. I think we started eight weeks ago talking about real estate. Um, Joe, were you one of the first that joined us? You might have been one of the first. I think. Yeah. 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 You know, and it's nice to circle back and see how things have changed over the last couple of weeks, see what's new and uh, get some new perspective, new perspective on the ground. We uh, we were talking right before we started how there um, there was a lull, a perceived lull. People were maybe nervous in the first week or two. And it's looking like the weather's getting nicer. Maybe, maybe it's picking up. What do you what do you what have you been seeing, Joe? Uh, absolutely. And whether it's a combination of that or just people getting tired of sitting on their hands, um, uh, I'm definitely seeing a, uh, a, a, a tidal wave of, of work on the real estate front. A lot of buyers, particularly from out of the area to coming into the area. New I'm Yorkers? Seeing a lot. Yeah. Um, I, I guess maybe if you're staring at the four walls of your apartment and you want out, <laughs> now's the time. <laughs> Could, this was the push, I guess. Um, I've had several deals where I've had clients make offers on property sight unseen. You know, their realtor is able to show it on a virtual tour or on a FaceTime video and they're putting in offers on properties. It's, it's that, that aggressive. Um, yeah, we did have that little lull and then all of a sudden like a tidal wave, it just, it just came back hard. Yeah. People had to be at least a little, you know, wanting to see, you know, hedge their bets a little bit, see what was going to happen as far as all, all this stuff is concerned before they kind of jump back in. Is it, are you seeing more stuff like uh, like rental properties, summer rental type situations, or is it like more beach homes or, or like more kind of forever homes for people? It's it's everything. I, I think if you know, what I'm seeing are if people were on the fence or had been putting off the decision maybe to get out of the city, for example, or something along those lines, that this was the nudge they needed. Um, I'm seeing a lot of that. I'm seeing people who are buying a lot of second homes. Mm-hmm. Um, so... You know, it, it's a bit unusual given, you know, the high rates of unemployment. You'd imagine that they would have an effect. Uh, and whether or not these areas are in more of an insulated bubble, I don't know. Um, but it definitely is, uh, is, a, is a vibrant market right now. And if you're a seller, it's a great time right now because buyers are out and they're looking. I, I saw a bumper sticker. I'm, I'm walking in my neighborhood and I see a bumper sticker and it says, I'd rather be in New York. And I'm like, are you, are you kidding me? <laughs> Take that off of there. Give me a break. <laughs> You'd is it be- a bumper sticker yeah. or is it brand new? That's the. It looked a little worn, but you know, you, this is the time to refresh <laughs> the bumper old. stickers, people. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I practice in New York too, and it, it's a dramatic difference. Um, New York real estate is it, it's happening, but in the downstate counties, New York City, where the openings haven't really been happening, there's a there's a host of prohibitions on realtors on what they're permitted to do. Um, so new showings are are, are are very limited and difficult, if at all, happening. And um, it's definitely a, a, a different market. And whether that's encouraging people to get out as well, I, I'm, I'm not sure. But it's, it's it's definitely a big difference and it's happening. We're, we're very busy in this area and it's great to see. 
you know, real estate's a big engine for, for a lot of other things. And Hope it continues. It seems like, I mean, wouldn't uh, real estate would be like the the a major indicator for a lot of growth or what's happening right now. Um, Matt, w- what have you been seeing as far as like how, how have you been getting you know notarizations done? H- how is how has your work kind of shifted uh, in order to get things done for your clients? Oh, we've we've had to change things across the board and how and how we do our business. But I just want to. Uh, reinforce what Joe said. We're seeing a tremendous number of people relocating right from Manhattan or Eastern Bergen County or Hudson County, um, Jersey City. Uh, several of the towns in our area right here in the Red Bank area, they have not, no houses or for rent. Yeah. Every single property was taken. <laughs> if you go on Zillow right now, you won't find a house in Little Silver or Fairhaven for rent. Well, was a couple of days ago, it was zero. I just rented out a pro- investment property I have, and there's a couple coming down from Manhattan. They're two young kids. They want out of the city. They haven't even put up their condo for sale yet. They're just moving down here because they grew up in Monmouth County, and they want to come back. So a big shift. It's got to uh, it's got to be a lot nicer down here than you know just just in the concrete jungle. Uh, it's quality of life. They feel safer. We have the parks. We have the ocean. We have the rivers. Um, I mean, that's why I moved here mm-hmm. and, and people see that and they don't, they don't have to worry about getting in an elevator or being jostled by crowds on the street. There's a people who can make the move or making the move. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, I've never seen it this much of a pattern happen. Such a change of pattern happen so fast. I mean, we would get occasional Manhattan people moving down here. I would do doing closings for, but now it's, we're doing closings for people out of Manhattan every week. Um, uh, as you you spoke about, you know, safety concerns as far as you know people moving down here, but also as far as uh, you know making sure that closings go well and that everything is on the up and up. Uh, you're doing uh, remote online notarization. Is that something that is just you kind of just hit the ground want, running with as far as the pandemic? Is this something you've done before? Or is it a shift? I've been actually helping to work on the legislation behind the scenes as part of the board consultants for the State Bar Association for the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. New Jersey passed some emergency legislation that's only good for the duration of the governor's executive order. Um, But there is pending permanent legislation. New York has temporary emergency legislation doing the same thing. Look, they've introduced permanent legislation on the federal level also. But I want to explain what it really means because okay. there's different types of online closings. The banks are already having certain documents signed electronically. Um, that's been, that's a slow shift that's been happening for, for years. But those documents they want notarized or certain things they want wet ink signatures on, like the mortgage and note, the two big documents in the closing. Those are the ones that are going to create the stumbling blocks. Um, so there's Ron and Rin. And I want to just take a couple of minutes to explain it, give basic understanding. Yeah, give it to Remote us. Online notarization really means mm-hmm. where everything is electronic. The people are, uh, the pe- everyone is signing electronically, like through DocuSign or another software program like that, or Adobe. Um, remote ink notarization is what we're already doing and we've been doing for the last couple of months since the pandemic, where the notary may be in a separate room than the borrower signing, the purchaser, or they may be across town or outside in their car. They're watching them sign electronically through Zoom or Meet, you know, through Microsoft Team or through one of the other software systems. And then they take that, they usually get that package mailed to us and then the notary is signing in ink. That's remote, I'm sorry, that's the remote ink notarization. Remote online notarization where everything is electronic, the electronic signature. So we've been doing the ink version because that's what our underwriters will allow and the, most of the lenders will allow at this point. As they've been testing the waters with selling mortgages on the secondary market, uh, an e-vault for the notes so the notes can be transferred if one lender buys it from another lender. All the stuff that average person don't care about, yeah. but the banks care about. Yeah, I mean, this <laughs> stuff has to get done. I mean... You know, I, I read recently an article that says what we're going through now has accelerated 
uh, accelerated, you know, the, the, the time in which, you know, we're moving towards meaning like a lot of the electronic stuff, a lot of doing stuff online, even how we're viewing things. Um, it's all pushing us kind of into the, it's kind of forcing us to go to where we would have ne inevitably gone to. Um, Joe, have, have you, have you found this whole process, you know, especially since we last talked, has this whole process kind of been smooth as, as it do you see like a light at the end of the tunnel where this will make things easier for you and dealing with transactions um or is it kind of gummed it up a little bit at first i think it gummed up things quite a bit right when everybody's trying to figure out where we were and what to do but once we got past that it was a very short period of time it seems like everyone just kind of went with it um whether it's from from my staff all being ready to go um and then clients on the for the most part are welcoming the technology and the, and the ease of, of access and use um uh, you know for closings i mean i'm attending closings virtually for the most part i'm seeing all the documents in front of me as my client is looking at it and reviewing it with them and clients are perfectly happy with this now i, I don't think there's a real full replacement ever for belly to belly like being in the same room with someone being able to look them in the eye and get a real feel for them but it really is has certainly uh pushed us all towards this virtual world and um connecting this way i could tell you many more of my clients have suddenly been open to conducting a, a first-time consultation for example with me never having met before virtually by video um and we just implemented some procedures for that i mean that would almost never happen before you know the covid19 and everything else but it's becoming the norm i think it will be the norm going forward yeah definitely aaron how you doing man how's your uh memorial day did you did you did you do any kind of uh, water skiing or uh, any kind of barbecuing, perhaps? Anything at all of that nature? Uh, how, water, how's the LG doing? Water skiing would be fun. I haven't water skied in 25 years and 50 <laughs> pounds ago. Okay. Some, something along those measurements. Um, we can, you know, Memorial Day was, was, was good. It played golf one day and socially distance on the golf course until all four of us hit our golf ball, like right next to each other. <laughs> Odds of that happening, you know, who knows, mm -hmm. but uh, other than that, you know, we're just hanging and waiting for, for the warm weather and, and business is good. You know, real estate is a nice piece of the puzzle for, for us here. So these new home purchases and especially people moving into state from out of state are great business opportunities for us because we get to, you know, write multiple lines of business and help people move their homes and their cars and, you know, get them acclimated and up to date. You know, I don't know how you get a new driver's license now moving out of state into, into state. Yeah. But I think those companies are given some leeway with those out of state licenses right now. Um, but we're, we're, we're certainly keeping busy, you know, on, on the real estate side, the business side is definitely slow, but on the real estate side and the new purchases and people moving and renting, um, it's great. It's great to see all the activity. It keeps us, keeps, I guess it keeps us alive. You could say, yeah, uh, all of us on this screen here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, definitely. I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, I've talked to a lot of people. I've talked to contractors. I've talked to people, you know, kind of along, you know, all, the whole spectrum. And it seems that people, you know, I, I know a lot of people are hit hard. I know restaurants, it's been difficult, especially for, you know, the service industry where, where people are actually, you know, waiting in 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 a restaurant that they're hit hard but there's also this other segment of people that are you know they're still going they're motivated they're they're keeping they're keeping busy uh as far as you know what you know what they can do so i mean it's 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 just a really kind of i guess unprecedented time still um i think we know a lot more than we did you know <laughs> when me and when me and aaron kind of sat down and been doing this you know remote podcast stuff um i'm wondering if there's any kind of like you know, changes or, or Matt, if there's any kind of like, have you been dealing with any kind of like dramatic title disputes or like things that have arisen, people trying to pull shenanigans oh, because of uh, what's going on right now? Absolutely. Everything comes out of, whenever you have an emergency, mm -hmm. uh, people, uh, uh, the, uh, the tricksters crawl out of the woodwork. <laughs> I, I had to tell very nicely, I had to tell an attorney, basically, his client was attempting to commit fraud, and I thought he was actually trying to help them commit fraud, because they uh, were trying to, they had transferred a property to an L a company that they had been created, 
And then the IRS lien was filed. Well, no, it was an arm's length sale, but it probably wasn't. It probably it was the owner's own money that was used to fund the LLC, purchasing it from her, uh, so she could then sell it. I have very sneaky. And the, the, but the worst part is the um, it's this. Everyone's a lot of people are working from home. Seventy five percent of my staff work at home. A lot of that's permanent, but it's hard to have the same attention to what you're doing so even though we do a lot of training at two rivers title for fraud prevention and we haven't been nicked yet and but now if they have the distraction of family around and all of a sudden they might click on that link they should shouldn't have oh yeah so the incident of cyber fraud in real estate transactions in the last 90 days nationwide is up fivefold wow it's just as people are that. not as careful at home as they are when they're in their office. Yeah, I could imagine. I mean, I, I have a I have a five month old uh, here, soon to be six months, and you know, it's 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 really difficult sometimes, especially if if uh, if the kids cry and scream and whatever, uh, to kind of focus uh, throughout the day. Um, I have had to shift kind of the way I work, where I get more done after ten at night. Than I do during the day, just because it's you know it's quiet. But I, I mean, it's it's pretty interesting that you know it's it's these 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 things you don't really think of. You know, I I think there's a lot of jobs, a lot of businesses where you can do the work from home if if you can concentrate, if you have an office, if you could sit by yourself and do it. There's a lot of things that you know seemed a little absurd. There's other businesses where obviously you have to you know a nail salon is a nail salon. You you can't you can't work remotely. Um, but I never even kind of considered how that could affect things like fivefold. That's 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 pretty crazy. It's crazy. I almost got nicked uh, a couple of days ago. Uh-huh. Now we we train, we do a lot of training inside the company. Don't click on the link yeah. if you weren't expecting. Somebody didn't tell you I'm about to send it. You pick up the phone and call. Did you just send this before you click on a document or a link? So I got an email. We do some public bid work, and I got an email out of Jersey City from the director of purchasing that. They want us to bid on some projects and I wasn't thinking and I responded to it. Mm. And then like 15 minutes later, I got an email said, good, here's the form to fill out so you're eligible to be a pool title agency. Mm. And I said, all right, wait a second, what's wrong here? I couldn't figure out what I thought was wrong. I went on the website, the guy was there, director of purchasing, contacted a few people. Yeah, that's that's him, he's in charge. Yeah, he be the one doing this. Called, called the number. On the screen, uh-huh. you know, so wait a second. That's not the number that was in the email. There you go. Then I realized what was really wrong was that I got a response from a government official in 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> but flag. normally, if I, was, I would have figured that out right away. Yeah. <laughs> and it wound up he just retired. Hmm. We hadn't even taken him off the website yet. Smooth. So. Aaron, it, that's that sounds like a little cybersecurity uh, insurance is is in, is in order. Am I right? And these two guys are are well equipped with their uh, with their cyber and uh, and and insurance policies. Uh, but yeah, the cyber is crazy right now, and just getting new cyber for anybody is 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 nuts. Um, is, is it more difficult now? Like, what's the process? It's more difficult because the insurance companies are are getting crushed right now with all of these issues. These, you know, as Matt says, things are up fivefold. The insurance companies are getting hit with claims that they were not expecting, um, you know, on the cyber side and on the employment side of things. And so the insurance companies are looking at the applications more closely to make sure that you're encrypting data and you have training protocols in place to don't click the link. Like rule number one, don't click on it if don't you're not a click, right? Like that should be like a billboard, you know, instead of, you know, put your seatbelt on, like don't click the link <laughs> or on the on the highway. We have to have because a PSA more campaign. More risk being at home and, you know, having the home network set up in a more secure fashion is also important for those that could be sitting outside your, your, your home trying to break into your home network to get onto your computer that way. I mean, it's, it's just, it's, it's, it's wild out there with uh, what's going on on the cybersecurity side of things and on the cyber liability, cyber insurance stuff. And, you know, Matt, Matt knows all about it and, is probably just as versed or not better, more versed than I am on the cyber liability stuff because it's so important to his business. And as a title agency and escrow company, 
you guys are the number one target and Joe probably as a law firm, you're number two. Hmm. So we're right there. <laughs> we're the firing line. Absolutely. So, you know? uh, going, going from, you know, the, this, there's, there's so many things coming at us now because it's, it's, you know, we have to deal with this cyber stuff. We have to deal with the online stuff. And then, you know, kind of going back to how we were, obviously we're not going to go exactly how, how we were, but like offices opening back up, um, what are, what are we looking like? Uh, Aaron, obviously you're, you're in a very, uh, cleaned, uh, sterilized, uh, office, but you're by yourself. Uh, you know, your other employees aren't, aren't in there right now, but what have you, what have you guys been kind of doing to prepare or where do you, where do you see this going? How do you see offices opening back up for your company or for other companies? Uh, Joe, what do you think? Well, I think it's going to be different for everyone. Um, you know, I actually had a, a meeting via video conference with my staff from a Red Bank office this morning to talk about this very thing about maybe reintegrating, getting back in, in. And, you know, you get different answers from people for a variety of reasons. Like some of my younger staff is not as concerned. So my older staff is more concerned, you know, justifiably so. Mm-hmm. Um, but I really think, uh, you know, we're going to have to, it's going to be a slow integration for us. And when we do get staff back in, in the space on a more regular basis, I don't think we're going to immediately open the location for, you know, for third parties uh, to be coming in. It's going to be more like a, a workplace. I, like uh, what Matt mentioned earlier, not having that your team in the same place, you lose some of that focus. You lose some of that collaboration ability that, you know, no matter what your video systems are, whether you're using Teams or all sorts of other services, it's hard to replace that. Mm-hmm. We can just call out or hear what someone's saying. Um, so you're trying to trying to get that back. And uh, it, it's a, I think it's going to be a slow process. It is, gonna, I think, going to be for us at least. Um, my New York office is even more complicated. It's more of a shutdown situation there. I have more, more staff in that location, uh, all with variety of concerns. And, you know, many of them have children. And, you know, how do you, you know, if, you, if your kids are home and they're not in school, uh, you know, and you work full time, how do you balance that? So we're, we're going to be offering as much work from home capability and, and uh, flexibility as possible. And but quite honestly, many of my team is many of them on my team are asking to come back. <laughs> <They can't wait. laughs> Can uh, I get out of my house, please? Yeah, I'm getting a lot of that, too. So uh, it's it's going to be different, I think, case by case and, and employee by employee. And I'm just going to make it as flexible as I possibly can with keeping everybody's protection in mind. It's the number one important you know, concern. What uh, what about what about you, Matt? Are, are people clamoring to get back in the office or, or what are you finding? Some are. Some I had to kick out of the office and they were not happy about it. Uh-huh. We kept a minimal staff in each of our locations. Um, but we already had some people working from home. We had been planning um, to roll out a new company-wide policy to give people greater flexibility. This really just accelerated the process. I don't think we'll ever have more than 40, 45% of the people working in the office at any one time now. Uh, our game plan is to offer the flexibility to the to everybody in the company um, so that um, everybody who wants to work from home can as much as possible. And even some who don't really want to work from home, that, that they are required to work remotely or on an, or an adjusted schedule. And we'll probably have group people into three teams across the different departments and they'll have overlapping schedules. So We can try to maintain that cohesiveness, but people get to interact with everybody in the company over time, Um, but that now people will be socially distanced um, and just have a cleaner, safer environment. And I thought it was going to be, I actually expected the the parents and some of the older people to want to... want to be away from the house, want to be in the office for that break. And I had some surprises where the people who are in the 30s and 40s are actually loving working from home. They're adjusting their hours and we're being flexible with that. So they do it around their kids' schedules and it's all working out. Cool. So this has been a big eye opener for us. And some of the, the youngest people, the people in their 20s, they want to be at the office. They want to learn. They want to be mentored. They want to be they're I'm a little bit surprised they're more into the office setting than the older employees so it's a uh it'll be, we'll work it out but it's it's definitely going to be a different dynamic because it is going to be work from home permanently for a portion of the time for most of the staff and they're all excited about it we're just formalizing the 
the whole setup now. Yeah, this is this is the future. This is we've kind of accelerated ourselves into this, you know, where where we were eventually, you know, going to go. We're not exactly at a hologram status yet, but eventually that'll be happening. Um, I prefer my my Zoom calls. Um, but speaking about going into offices or going into, say, uh, retail establishments and stuff like that, um, as t- landlords and tenants kind of figuring this out, um, Joe, what have you been experiencing as far as, as like as on the commercial side? Are, are there are there people are there are they looking for leniency? Are landlords kind of being hard asses about it? Like how how are how are you navigating those waters? Well, it's, it's, it's almost again, case by case, uh, you know, and primarily you're fine. I'm finding that it's based upon relationships. So the landlords and tenants who got along swimmingly for years and, you know, always took care of each other. They're the ones who are working it out now. Mm -hmm. Uh, if you're, if you hated your tenant and your tenant, you know, left the faucet running 24 seven or whatever it is, uh, you know, those landlords are not being too forgiving at, at this time. I mean, you know, the good news for tenants is that, you know, in New Jersey, there's, you know, by executive order, we have an eviction moratorium right now. So you, you can't be evicted if, you know, under, except under extreme circumstances um, and, and rare cases. But, uh, you know, that's the good news for tenants. Of course, that's the bad news for landlords, you know. <laughs> yeah. So if your tenant's not paying right now, you're kind of kind of stuck. Um, you know, the governor by executive order allowed, uh, you know, security deposits to be applied towards rent. Um you know, so that's happening, uh, but that only gets you so far, you know, where you have security deposits. If it's not more than a month, you know, we're in this longer than that now, right? So if you're unemployed and you applied your deposit, you're still ultimately going to owe those balances. So, you know, that, that's it's a tricky time for both sides, um, you know, and, and on the commercial side, you know, I've had clients buy commercial investment properties, uh, you know, right before this all happened, then all of a sudden all their tenants closed. You know? <laughs> yeah. You know, they got big commercial mortgages to pay. So it's getting on the phone with the bank and trying to have the conversation, hey, work with us. The debts don't go away, but with good relationships, you're able to work out a structured payment o- over time as your tenants come back online and such. So it doesn't, um, that's kind of what we're seeing. Yeah, it doesn't really benefit. You know, it's 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 either, you know, we work together, help each other out. That goes from the banks to the landlords to the tenants. You have to work together because, you know, if if the if the tenant can't pay, if they're paying you, they can't pay, and their business shuts down, that doesn't look good for a shopping center. You know, that doesn't yeah. do you know for the retail industry, that doesn't help anybody out. Obviously, landlords want to make money, um, but they kind of have to think, you know, down the line, like years down the line, what is this going to mean? You know, if if I if I'm not so uh, agreeable in the beginning now, and then I, I don't have a tenant there, you know, I'm, I'm losing money any, I'm losing money either way, you know, everybody's losing money. That's um, right. Nothing worse than a dark space in a, in a, <laughs> in a commercial investment property. Yeah, exactly. Um, it's tricky moving forward. I mean, who, who knows where we're coming out of? There's only a few people I know that are making significant investments right now and, and opening up new stores. Uh, <laughs> Joe knows who I'm talking about. Um, <laughs> Matt, are you? Are there any commercial closings? Is any buying anybody buying any larger, mid-sized commercial property? Are you seeing any of that? We're seeing some of it, but we've had a few commercial deals suspended and several commercial refinances put on hold. Well, probably canceled. Uh, we had a um, a, a large uh, strip mall here in Monmouth County where uh, all the tenants closed. Ooh. All of them, and this when this, we were supposed to close in the beginning of April, and um, they don't know if any of their tenants are going to reopen. They're waiting to find out. They just the bank sent somebody over to review the status of the tenants a few days before closing. Wow! In the middle of the day, and the entire mall was dark. Hmm. Seven tenants. Wow! Wow! Yeah. So I, it's it's a. Uh, it's tough. We're definitely seeing the change of a mix of business, um, but it is bounced back, at least on the residential side. Um, refinances because rates are very low. Um, and it's a, you know, everyone's, but a lot of people are taking a plunge. It's, it's good to see that people are still buying homes. If, if that means that Every time you somebody sells a home, somebody buys a home, there's movers, there's repairmen, there's handymen, there's contractors, there's everything under the sun. And I can tell you, trying to hire landscapers and 
handyman and contractors in the last month. Oh. They're all really busy. Yeah. Especially now that, that there were, um, now they, the, it was suspended for a time and non-essential construction had been suspended. Um, and that uh, ban was lifted. So uh, they all have, they were all have pent up work for a couple of months. Yeah. I mean, I, I, <laughs> it was funny. I was, I was talking to this one, uh, this one contract. I just, I just wanted a fence put up, man. I just wanted a fence put up and, and the guy was so busy. I guess I was just small potatoes and he just, he just was so busy. He never, he never got back. We had to go find somebody else. There's definitely, you know, in that respect, you know, outdoor stuff, there's definitely uh work, work to, to be had. I mean, uh, as far as the, the residential in Monmouth, Monmouth County is tough because there's really no, there wasn't inventory before. I imagine that there wasn't magically, you know, inventory sprouting out of, of somewhere where there's no land. Uh, Ocean County, you know, it's got to be easier down there because it's kind of people, it's like a, you know, a little bit of a four letter word going down to Ocean County. I love Ocean County. Everyone, Tom's River. I love you guys. Uh, epic shouts to everyone from down there. Uh, but, you know, with, there, there's more property, it seems, down that way. Um, have you seen people kind of giving, have, have any of you seen more of a shift towards maybe some waterfront stuff in Ocean where they might have been looking in Monmouth County, anything like that? It, it's it's everywhere. Uh-huh. It's, I, I'm seeing purchases are up everywhere. The demand is everywhere. Um, I've had deals come back and get killed in attorney review because of subsequent offers that came in waiving inspections mm. where my client has come back and then said, okay, fine, we'll match it and increase the price. Oh, man. Any inspection. That I mean, is, this is, that's a little bit uh, of, you're playing a little Russian roulette with that. Like right. there's a lot of like cash or people are coming in and be like, I'll do a cash offer, no inspections. That is like, that's kind of crazy. That's, that's, you know, but I guess if You're doing it though yeah. and the high end of the market, which was kind of slow for the last couple of years, maybe there's the salt, the, the tax, uh, the, the limitation of the tax deductions, um, they're all moving. Yeah, We've done more true. high end homes in the last 90 days than we did in the last year. Wow. It is really an Ocean County too. Well, and all those uh, places that were just vacation homes or summer rentals, Bill, those towns were filled all winter because every anyone who had access to one of those homes, especially on the waterfront, you go down to Bayhead, you go down to Little Lake Harbor, all those houses were occupied since February. Yeah. It, uh, so it's it's not it's, open, but the houses were, were is filled. It, is it right now? Is it is it is is it as busy, busier than it was say a year ago, or is it like you know how, how does it compare to say a quote unquote normal? year uh around this i know it picks up in the spring anyway you know is it, is it co- comparable it, it, the year started off for me uh in new jersey way 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 ahead of of my pace last year just by volume of transactions uh like i said then we had that lull and it kind of caught up a bit to let you know fell behind to or, towards last year's pace but again it just like i said it hit like a tidal wave and it's it's accelerating. So I'm still ahead of last year's pace and last year was a great real estate year, um, you know, volume wise. So I, I, I see things going really powering forward. I, I think when everybody's going to be out and getting back to, to work, everybody's going to be anxious to get things moving. Now, you know, there's going to be a lot of spillover from people still furloughed or unemployed. And, and, you know, do we have your job or not? Is your business reopening? There's still a lot of that, but despite all of that, Real estate in this area is very strong right now, and uh, that engine I think is going to continue to drive. Like Matt mentioned, all the other various spinoff work and, and business that will, you know, as a result. Um, so I'm hoping that continues. If, if rates are staying where they are, um, you know, I could see this continuing to happen. But you know, we'll we'll see in the coming months. But I suspect it's going to go well. Yes, yeah, Scott Hobbs just mentioned uh, there appear to be more buyers, but considerably less listings. I mean the. The listings, mm-hmm. it, you know, they there is less because people, people, maybe I don't know. It's hard to say how, how many there are versus how many there aren't because as soon as a listing goes on the market, within days, you know, it'll it'll be scooped up, and the the people that wanted to buy traditionally are kind of being overlooked because people are just you know showing up with a with a bunch of cash and they're saying, boom, I want it, and people want these close, you know, to to have these closings very quick. Um, you know, I'm wondering if, 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 you know, aside from all the technical stuff and having to do remote is, is, were there difficulties 
in in doing these closings and checking on titles because people want it wrapped up so fast? Was that happening before all the pandemic stuff happened, or, or is it you know is it happening more more now? Like Matt, what are you what are you seeing in regards to that? Um, it depends on what county we're talking about. Um, Monmouth, uh, the county clerk has been very good about giving access to the searchers for the records, for the stuff that we have to do in person. Some searching we can do online. Um, Ocean was completely shut down for a while. So uh, other counties up north completely shut down. We had to basically stop doing deals in Mercer County because there was no access uh, uh, in, in person. The things are freeing back up. Everyone's opening up, at least on a limited basis. Passaic is now open to searchers like a day and a half a week. So we're getting caught up there. So we've learned we've learned some uh, workarounds. We've cooperated with other title agencies uh, to gain access to their back title plant. And we've been sharing ours with other companies. Everyone's being more cooperative. Maybe it's the nature of, of a crisis that everyone's a little more agreeable to working with each other. Yeah. Um, so we definitely had a few bumps in the road, but we're pretty much getting past that. And as Joe looks like he wants to jump in on this one. (laughs) (laughs) Um, yeah, I mean, in the beginning, like I said, it was a bit of a scramble to figure out how we were going to physically close a transaction when, you know, you couldn't be in the same room. Uh, it was definitely, a, you know, a little tricky figuring that out, but I got to tell you what, you know, working with strategic partner, it was like to her title and that. Uh, we've been able to work that out. I mean, I've had clients closing in their cars, park benches uh, at their homes. Um, you know, people parked outside their homes and, and shuttling documents back and forth. Everybody wearing masks and gloves. I mean, any way you can think of to get it done, it's getting done. Mm-hmm. At least, at least from what we're seeing and experiencing and, and handling firsthand. It's um, but it was a challenge in the beginning. You know, we had to get everybody on board with the concept of it, right? And but like Matt said, in times of crisis, it seems like. Everybody wants to work together to figure out a way to make it happen. Um, so that's that's what we're able to have been, have been doing and continuing to do. It's um, it's interesting, but like you said, it's the new normal. I think it accelerated everything into this. Yeah. Um, it really brought fast forward, like warp speed into into the next next state of, of things. Um, so for for better or for worse, here we are. Yeah, for better or for worse, Aaron. What do you uh, what do you think about all this? Are you are you finding it easier to work with your clients this way just to get things wrapped up or are you you're kind of like a you know you you like meeting you like being interfacing with people so this has got to be a new challenge for you no i like being out for drinks uh, <laughs> oh man with, i can't wait you miss that yeah you know I, you know we all we all miss that my my bank account doesn't miss that <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh you know it's it, it's good working this way. We always work with most of our clients, you know, remote via email. We've been doing a lot more video work. Like we're actually sending quotes via video now. Um, instead of just saying, sending an email and picking up the phone, we're doing a lot of video. We're doing a lot of video chat with clients now um, and prospects, getting people on on video chats and sharing documents and quotes and, and walking through people, you know, live that way. So that it's been good and we're bringing on some new technologies here as well to to try and automate and streamline processes. So you know now that I think we're we're getting out of the thick. If we're getting out of the thick, you know we're we're trying to get ahead of the curve and um, and also stay ahead of the competition. We want to do our be- the best that we can for our clients and you know still be that local insurance agent, even though we're licensed in seventeen states. But you know we want to be use that high technology and make sure we're communicating the best we can you know hopefully my staff will come back to the office someday soon but i'm not going to make anybody we're we're yeah. productive they're doing their job and for now it's for now it's working um while i am lonely being in the office by myself you know it's also like i'm a college kid in a dorm room i, I need somebody to come here and clean up <laughs> yeah, i was thinking of the main tag repairman <laughs> i'm sitting in your warehouse <laughs> just sitting there I mean, it's it's definitely. I mean, that's part of it too. Is the staying ahead of the a competition. There's there's a lot of people that kind of stalled out. We've talked about it before, where they just didn't really hit the ground running, and you know that that's a big part of it too. Is people got to realize you can't just you can't just think it's going to go back to the way it was. I've mentioned that a billion times. Um, so staying ahead of that is 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 great. 
Um, any anything else? I mean, this has been a great conversation. We have a lot of comments. Uh, people people talking about uh, you know what, what you know agreeing or appreciating kind of what we're talking about. I think we pretty much covered uh, the gambit of it. Did I, did I miss anything, guys? No. Oh, well, all right. Good. <laughs> good. Listen, it, the real estate is going to be. It's going to get more electronic. It's going to get faster. It's going to get easier. It's going to be less formal, which is kind of nice. Yeah. Um, and you know, closings will be doing be done like this, where everybody's talking to each other on a screen. Maybe a couple of people will be in the room together. But it'll, it's definitely becoming a more convenient process. When we emerge on the other side of this, uh, real estate is going to be easier than ever. That's great. That's good. Uh, I like to leave it on uh, on that note. Uh, we have uh, all of my guests. So wonderful. So informative. Thank you very much. Aaron Levine, LG Insurance. As always, I still owe you that drink. As soon as we can get out, I'm going to get you that drink. <laughs> Joe Astrida, thank you so much for, for coming back. Um, yeah. And Matt, thank you so much. Two River Titles. Two Rivers Title. Uh, thank you so much for joining us this time. Uh, this has been Totally Local Podcast, covering everything you need to know about Monmouth and Ocean County uh, at large, uh, talking to colorful characters, wonderful local businesses. Check us out on totallylocalpodcast.com, on Facebook, and totally underscore local underscore podcast on Instagram. Thanks a lot, guys, uh, and uh, be safe and uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you, Andy. Thanks. Boom.